Hi everyone, this is another video on the Attention Mechanism series brought to you by the ML Studio. In this video, I will talk about multi-head attention that was proposed in the paper Attention is all you need. Here is the outline of this video. In the last video, I described the scaled dot product attention in full detail. But given that the scaled dot product or SDP is at the core of multi-head attention. So in this video, first we will see a quick recap of SDP, then I will describe what multi-head attention is and how it works. And finally, we can see two ways of using the attention mechanism, which is either using it as self-attention or using it for cross-attention. So we will see the differences between the two mechanisms. And at the end, I will finish this video with an exercise. So first, let's start with a quick overview of scaled dot product attention or SDP. Given a sequence of words, for example, words from an English sentence, the goal of SDP is to find the relationship between these words. So here, each rectangle represents a word or token in this sentence. So first, we extract features x1 to xt, where t is the sequence length. Then, from each xi, we compute three vectors q, k, and v, which are known as query, key, and value vectors. These computations are based on a matrix multiplication, as shown in the equation box here. Then, we put these q, k, and v vectors together, to four matrices Q, K, and V as shown here. At this point, we are ready to move to the first step in the scale dot product attention. On the left panel, you can see the full diagram of scaled dot product attention with Q, K, and V matrices as input. In the first step, we compute a dot product or a matrix multiplication between Q and K and we'll get a compatibility matrix, which has dimensionality T by T. In the next step, we scale the compatibility matrix by one over a square root of D sub K, where D sub K is the dimensionality of vectors Q and K. In the previous video, I explained why this scaling is necessary, but for the sake of time, we can skip this discussion here. Step 3 is an optional step, so I did not cover that in the previous video. This step is only needed in some applications, such as in sequence-to-sequence -sequence translation or autoregressive sequence generation. For example, when we are training a model to generate new sequences, and our input sequences contain past and future sections of a sentence, the objective is to predict future tokens of that input sequence, but the input sequence contains future tokens. So in that case, we have to mask the future tokens. And we can do that by setting the upper triangular section of the compatibility matrix to negative infinity as shown here. This will ensure that word i will not be able to see or attend to words with larger index than itself. Now in step four, we apply the softmax function to normalize the compatibility matrix, which results in the attention weights. Note that if we have masked the upper triangle of the compatibility matrix in step three with negative infinity, then after applying the softmax, the upper triangle of the result will be zero. And finally, in step 5, we perform another matrix multiplication between the attention weights from previous step and the matrix V. The result of this is our context matrix, which we call matrix Z. So now we can move on to multi-head attention. The idea of multi-head attention is as follows. Instead of performing a single attention on large matrices Q, K, and V, it is actually better to break it into multiple smaller dimensions and perform a scale dot product separately on each of those smaller matrices. This is the full diagram of multi-head attention proposed in the paper 
attention is all you need. So let's walk through the steps involved in multi-head attention. First, we have to define how many heads we want to use for multi-head attention. The lowercase symbol h is used to indicate the number of heads and typically this value is set to 8. After that, we have to get that many number of set of Q, K and V matrices. For query matrices, I'm showing them with superscript 1 to H. So we have Q1 to QH and we have K1 to KH for the key matrices and V1 to VH for the value matrices. To get these matrices, we multiply X, H times with H different weight matrices for Q and the same thing for K and for V. Then in the second step, we perform a scaled dot product attention on each triple set of QI, KI and VI. And we name the output of each attention as the context matrix head I. Performing SDP on all sets from 1 to H gives us head 1 to head H. For step 3, we have these H different matrices head 1 to head H as shown here. And each one of them has dimensionality T by D over H. In this step, we concatenate these heads together and we get matrix Z with dimensionality T by D. Finally, in the last step, we perform a matrix multiplication between matrix Z and the learnable weight matrix WO, resulting in the context output for this multi-head attention layer. A very important point here is that the computational cost of multi-head attention is more or less similar to performing a single scaled dot product on large Q, K, and V matrices. But while the computational cost is similar, multi-head attention is more beneficial than a single scaled dot product attention. The reason is multi-head attention can extract context information from different subspaces at different positions of the input sequence. So that brings us to the last topic of this video, self-attention versus cross-attention. So self-attention is when we want to get the relationship among the words in an input sequence. And we have seen several examples so far in this video and the previous one. Each word in this sequence can attend to other words with different degrees. But for cross-attention, we have two sequences, X and Y, and this could be, for example, a translation application, like X is the sentences in English and Y is their translations in German. And the length of sequences X and Y could be different. Here, we can use cross-attention to make each word in sequence Y to attend to words in sequence X. So let's see how this can be done. So as we have seen so far, for self-attention with a scale dot product, we extract matrices Q, K, and V from the input sequence X. But for cross-attention, we have two input sequences X and Y, and in order to make sequence Y attend to the words in sequence X, we extract matrix Q from Y and extract matrix K and V from X. Therefore, the main difference between the self-attention and cross-attention is basically where Q, K, and V come from. After we obtain these Q, K, and V, the rest are the same. I want to finish this video with an exercise. So imagine we have X with dimensionality T1 by D and Y with dimensionality T2 by D. And we want to know what will be the dimensionality of these other matrices that are computed for a single head cross attention between X and Y, where Y is attending to X. So find the dimensionality of Q, K, V, the compatibility matrix Q, K transpose, as well as the final context matrix Z. I will provide the answer in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.